Storytime friends. I'm Miss Kate and I'm so glad to see you again. I'm coming to you from the Washington County, Tennessee Public Library and this is Storytime at Kate's Cottage. My friend Seamus is here again with me today and as you can see he's got his little mask on. He wore it when he went out to the grocery store today to get his favorite thing. Do you know what it might be? It's honey. You're right. Bears love honey and Seamus had run out. So he went to the grocery store to get some and came right home afterward. Good job, Seamus. Well, before we find out what Seamus brought with him for us today, let's sing our story time song together. So here we go. Are you ready? Sit right down. Here we go. Story time, story time. It's a very special time. Let's all sit down. Down and we'll have a lot of fun story times for everyone. Some of my boys and girls like to do it really fast, so let's do a fast one. Story time, story time, it's a very special time. Let's all sit down and we'll have a lot of fun story times for everyone. And now let's do it very slow. Ready? Story time, story time, it's a very special time. Let's all sit down and we'll have a lot of fun. Story times for everyone. That's great. I'm just so glad to be with you again today. So, let's see what Seamus brought us. A big book. He brought us a story called A Quiet Place, and it was written by Douglas Wood, and the illustrations are by Dan Anderson. I bet you have a couple of quiet places that you like to go to, don't you? I know I do. Let's find out about this quiet place. Sometimes, a person needs a quiet place. A place to rest your ears from bells ringing and whistles shrieking and grown-ups talking and engines roaring and horns blaring and grown-ups talking and radios playing and grown-ups, well, even grown-ups need a quiet place sometimes. But it can be hard to find one. You have to know where to look. You could look under a bush, a lilac bush in your own backyard. When you crawl underneath it, all the sounds of the world seem soft and far away. And you can be a pirate, finding your buried treasure on a desert island. A bush could be your quiet place until someone calls you to clean your room. Then you could look in the woods. You might find an old stump for a chair or a mossy log for a couch in a green mansion of shadows and sunbeams. It's not really quiet, of course. Blue jays scream warnings and wind sings in the leaves, but it feels quiet and you can be a timber wolf, the gray ghost of the forest. The woods could be your quiet place. But if the woods are too dark and deep, you could look by the sea on a beach in the early morning fog. Your footprints are the first of the day. The waves are roaring and the gulls are crying, but it doesn't seem noisy. And you can just be an explorer discovering a lost continent. The beach could be your quiet place. But if the beach is not your cup of tea, you could look in the desert where old man saguaro reaches for the sky and far off thunderheads bloom like sky flowers over the mesas. A cactus wren drops by for a visit while a horned toad blinks in the sun. And you can be a pony express rider galloping through the old west, the desert could be your quiet place. But if the desert is a bit too dry, you could sit by a pond, 
A heron by the shore stands still as a tree branch, and the water is so calm it looks like a mirror. Then a frog plops from a lily pad, and your face begins to wiggle. And you can be the world's greatest fisherman reeling in a monster catch. A pond could be your quiet place. But if the fish aren't biting, you could look in a cavern where every footstep echoes and the slow drip, drip of water builds new rocks that hang like icicles or stand like sculptures where days and nights and weeks and years are all the same. And you can be a cave dweller in the lair of the saber-toothed tiger. A cave could be your quiet place. But if a cave is too cold and damp, you could climb to the top of a hill where clouds float by like ships or alligators or elephants. On a hilltop, you can see a long way and think long thoughts about how and what and why. And you can be a mountain climber on the top of the world. A hilltop could be your quiet place. But if your legs are too tired for climbing, you could wait for a snowy day and lie down in a snowdrift. All around you, the falling snow whispers, shh, and wraps the world in silence. If you listen closely, you can almost hear it breathing. You breathe softly too, pretending to be a polar bear, sleeping in a land where the snowy silence never ends. A snowdrift could be your quiet place. But if it's too warm for snowdrifts, you could visit a museum where brass tigers and bronze lions stand silent guard over fabulous treasures. Every painting is a magic window that your own imagination can open wide and climb through. And you can be an artist admiring your own masterpiece. A museum could be your quiet place. But if the museum is closed, you could go to a secret corner of the library where the only people talking are between the covers of books. They speak so softly, you can only hear them in your head as you read about forests and oceans and deserts and caverns and museums and a thousand other things. A library could be your quiet place. But if the library isn't open, you could come home and clean your room and read your own books and think your own thoughts and feel your own feelings and discover the very best quiet place of all, the one that's always there, no matter where you go or where you stay, the one inside of you. Do you have a special quiet place you like to go? Right now, because I'm home, I have lots of fun quiet places near me. And this is one right here on my back porch. And I'm so glad I could share it with you today. So I have a little song for us and we've done this before in story time. So I bet you remember, it's called Two Little Bluebirds. Have you seen any bluebirds at your house? I have a few at my house. So my song goes like this. Two little bluebirds sitting on a hill, one named Jack and the other named Jill. Fly away, Jack. Fly away, Jill. Come back, Jack. Come back, Jill. Two little bluebirds sitting on a car, one named Near and the other named Far. Fly away, Near. Fly away, Far. Come back, Near. Come back, Far. Two little bluebirds sitting on a stick. One named Slow and the other named Quick. Fly away, Slow. Fly away, Quick. Come back, Slow. Come back, Quick. 
two little bluebirds sitting on a cup. One named down and the other named up. Fly away down, fly away up, come back down, come back up. Two little bluebirds sitting on a cloud. One named quiet and the other named loud. Fly away quiet, fly away loud, come back quiet, come back loud. Two little bluebirds sitting on a lily. One named Sirius and the other named Silly. Fly away Sirius, fly away Silly. Come back Sirius, come back Silly. Two little bluebirds sitting on a hill. One named Jack, the other named Jill. Fly away Jack, fly away Jill. Come back Jack. Come back, Jill. Yeah, that was great. I really like that one too. I'm so glad we had this time together today and I can't wait till I see you again. We're going to be doing story time on Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock, but these videos are there for you anytime you'd like to see them again. Just go to our Facebook page. You can find them there or you can find them in the story time group is just off that page and I'll be there waiting to see you next time. I love you. Be well. Bye.